after I finished my space flight, uh, I had a choice. Either I join ISRO, but since there was no manned space program, I would not have been very productive. I would not have added value. Uh, plus, um, I would say that it wouldn't have been fulfilling for me. So I decided to go back to my old test flying job. And that's what I did. I went back to the Air Force and I continued with my disrupted test flying career. And uh, But nevertheless, the experience itself of going into space was certainly life-changing. I think it's been quite spectacular and uh, I'm very proud of, as an Indian, of what ISRO has done. And I would say that uh, they have got that success primarily because uh, the vision was very clear and they remained focused on that vision and uh, they had a very clear road map as to how they are going to move along uh, to achieve that uh, vision and uh, they kept meeting uh, all their milestones without uh, losing sight of the final destination and uh, now that the um, that part of the vision is successfully realized they have started focusing on exploration and on the manned uh, space missions. Necessity is the mother of invention. So whenever there has been technology denial, we have started uh, thinking for ourselves and coming up with uh, new innovative solutions to problems uh, which we are unable to uh, get help for. And uh, so we have achieved a lot by ourselves following that route. And uh, like, for example, if you don't have uh, the technology, uh, cryotechnology, uh, and you don't have the kind of uh, propulsive uh, technology to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, come up with uh, better power plants, uh, then in that case, uh, then you resort to uh, different methodologies like, like they did for Chandrayaan. Uh, you know, using the slingshot and so necessity becomes the mother of invention rather than sit and keep the, the other bad example in this is uh, like what uh, the gas turbine research establishment is doing in Bangalore for the last 35 years I mean more than that probably they've been trying to make that jet engine for, uh, for the LCA and that has still not seen the light of day so uh, I think uh, the ISRO's approach is, is different and that is why they've got the success that they have. <laughs> no, I had never even thought of going into space because, because we didn't have a manned space program. But uh, now that the uh, manned program is starting, and our exploration for of the moon has begun. It is within the realm of possibility, but my generation is done. It's the next generation who are going to be lucky and who will take part in this kind of an activity. Yes, of course, it is. India has already found out uh, traces of water with the Chandrayaan 1. And so this is a follow-on mission actually and the whole world is really waiting and hoping that uh, uh, Chandrayaan 2 will be successful because then it tells them that inhabiting the moon is a distinct possibility and everybody is waiting to set up shop on the moon. How do I look in the sense that the problem is that, as per the United Nations Charter, space doesn't belong to anybody. Now, 
if you want to go to the moon and uh, if private companies go to the moon then they will have to whatever they find over there whatever excavation they do whatever riches they bring back they will have to share it with their shareholders you know so they will have to show that they own that part whereas the united nation feels that space should be for the greater good of humanity so i don't know how they're going to reconcile that there'll be space law problems so governance issues are there so all of this has to evolve and i'm hoping that it evolves in such a way that conflict does not move from planet earth into outer space yeah. otherwise we'll be busy with star wars we need a bit of star peace it is that uh, every russian who goes to space gets that particular award so in that sense that award was just that or having gone into space with the russians uh, similarly the russian cosmonauts got the ashok chakra when they came to india because india has given ashok chakra to its own cosmonaut so so obviously the ones who went with me also were uh, awarded in the same fashion so it's a ceremonial thing that's how i look at it it's is one of everybody does that when you get up into orbit the first thing you do is look for your country you know so that's that's the very first thing i did that's the very first thing every astronaut or cosmonaut does so having seen that then i've been there eight days and was been flying over various parts of the world and it was very evident that our country looks beautiful from space because we've got mountains we've got rivers we've got plains we've got deserts we've got coastlines we've got a sea on three sides different colors different textures all in all a beautiful sight from space i would like to inform them that they are part of a lucky generation born at the right time because a lot of work is going to happen in outer space it has never happened before so this is their opportunity to do something which is truly path breaking and therefore they must try and be a part of this movement of exploration and they should not worry about a well paying job they for them they should get fulfilled by doing something which is challenging which has never been done before and that is what when they finish their careers and look back they will feel happy that they were involved in this kind of activity and they'll be doing it for for india I don't have to fear if I mean it's it's almost there already there are assets in space there are methodologies to uh, uh, you know uh, wage war in space sensors are there so anti satellite missiles are there so it's already in it's place yeah. yeah so so it's already there so we just hope that better sense prevails that's it.